What's going on, everybody, and welcome to the other side of the firewall podcast, where we talk about the latest and greatest of cybersecurity news, as well as we highlight those movers and shakers and glass cylinder breakers, those people of color who've made to the other side of the proverbial firewall. My name is Ryan Williams, and this week I'm joined by Chris Abacon. Uh, he'll be with me for the next two weeks. Uh, Shannon is on vacation, so definitely uh, send him your love, which he cannot read because he doesn't have social media, but I'll pass it to him. <laughs> I promise I will. Um, <laughs> But definitely tune in uh, throughout this entire uh, two weeks. We have 10 episodes, so Monday through Friday for the next two weeks. Uh, this week, we will have uh, Darren King Jr. on the Ask Us SP. So definitely tune in for that one. It's a really good conversation. He's in the uh, defense contracting space. So definitely tune in for that one. And then next week, uh, we have Jay Sanders. Uh, that's also an excellent um, uh, episode. And I'll talk more about that one uh, in the following week. So with that being said, I'll jump into today's topic so this one comes from the hill and is written by um i'm gonna butcher your name uh Tatiana. I, hmm? Tatiana. there you go um and it's called tackling the labor shortage in cybersecurity." uh so we um as a podcast right we're always talking about how we're going to grow uh, this this industry we're looking for diversity uh, uh as well as just growth in general so uh Back when I started the podcast, they said there would be uh, roughly a million vacancies in cybersecurity. And since then, we've we've continued to talk about there's still a million vacancies in cybersecurity. Uh, and then there's there's pipelines being built, right? The government is involved. Uh, the trillion dollar companies are involved. So Apple, uh, as well as Microsoft and Google are, are trying to bring more people into the pipeline. Uh, there are more uh, STEM programs being put into uh, more rural areas, as well as eight uh historically black colleges and universities. Uh, uh, and then there's just an amazing amount of growth. We talked about Microsoft has an initiative uh, in the Asian theater where they're trying to bring in more uh, uh, female uh, Asians into um, cybersecurity. So there is a lot of this happening, yet we still have a shortfall when it comes to uh, labor within this field uh, or multiple fields within this umbrella we call cybersecurity, right? So with that being said, uh, I'd like to get your uh, opinion on this one, Chris. So, I mean, cybersecurity, I mean, they're saying 700 job vacancies just in the U.S., right? So it's that's a lot. Yeah, because um, we were saying a million worldwide at one point. Now we're just yeah, saying a million, million just in our own country. <laughs> so, I mean, I, I would hope that the uh, at least parents out there, they're saying, hey, kiddo, or you can go learn how to do this coding thing, right? Or whatever it might be. But I think that with this shortage, right, I think there just might might be some kind of, I think it's a marketing issue, so to speak, right? Like how 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 difficult, how uh, how involved is cybersecurity? Do people have an idea of that that they're going to be, you know, in the weeds doing a, a lot of the programming, a lot of the engineering? But I think a lot of people have to understand that a lot of cybersecurity is is a business process too, right? Like security policies, documentation. Um, and really, it's it's not the sexiest job, so to speak. But I, I definitely think that you know more education and awareness as we with with the younger generation. Yeah. Uh, the cybersecurity. I mean, with these vacancies, I mean, there's a potential for this to be to many firms or many. There's a lot of potential out there, right? And I, I also think that breaking into cybersecurity is a difficulty because. How do you just become a cybersecurity, you know, analyst or you know, lower level, you know, starting range cybersecurity analyst without yeah. any experience in that, right? So, I mean, I like to break it down by like, hey, what's the most basic IT job you can think of? Like help desk, right? It's usually the help desk guys or gals that you know, you know, decide to choose. Hey, do I want to go into engineering? Do I want to go into system administration? Do I want to go into architecture, right? Or do I want to go to cybersecurity, right? So it's from there. So when you have this idea of this, this um, almost like a stovepipe, right? Or when you have this like focal point of people to draw from, you're not going to get as many, you know, cybersecurity professionals, right? So opening it up to, like, I think the article here was alluding to, or at least uh, Ms. Tatiana Bolton was alluding to the fact that you know, opening it up to other, other industries, right? O opening up cybersecurity or you know, some of these job fields, some of these job postings to people that aren't necessarily IT focused, right? Mm -hmm. Well, that aren't necessarily technical. So uh, as long as there's an understanding of the business process of cybersecurity, I, I think that once that 
messages out there, we're going to start seeing a lot more people in cybersecurity. And I, mean, I recently transitioned on the military, right? And a lot of the people in my TAPS course were like, I want to be a cybersecurity analyst. I want to do this. Like people that were, you know, engineers, right, uh, on ships, right? They wanted to dive into cybersecurity because they didn't want to be engineer or, you know, hands-on, you know, turning wrenches anymore, right? So um, a lot of them talked to me and said, hey, what did you do to get into it? I mean, unfortunately, my, in my set, I, I was uh I did health desk. I did the I did the traditional rod of you know I was some of the first things I did in the military were like health desk type functions, right? So I I was on that natural progression point, but they're you know doing a paradigm shift. So I I just think that there's uh, I think that there could be one more acceptance from companies to hire people that aren't you know that don't have the necessary experience, create positions for this, right? So it's a managerial issue and you know, the strategy issue from companies like, hey, how are we going to get more, how are we going to get more cybersecurity analysts, right? Where are, going to be, where are we going to draw the talent pool from? And how we can, how can we use our resources and how can, how can we maximize uh, the employees, right? Um, and then it also talked about like emphasis on diversity and no doubt uh, diversity, you know, inclusion, um, you know, drawing from, you know, let, let's, Getting as many people, as many students out there educated, it's going to just help solve. Yeah, absolutely. And and that, uh, what you're alluding to is GRC, right? So like GRC is not the sexiest. Uh, no, I, I no. love it. That's that's my favorite part of, of cybersecurity. Um, I agree. And, right. Uh, I don't think enough people know what it is. So GRC is uh, governance, risk, compliance, right? So that's the people who are looking at your policies, your programs, uh, and they're, they're trying to make sure you're adhering to whatever framework um, you're governed by whether it be uh, you're in uh, finance, so you have SOX, or you're in uh, uh, medical, so you have uh, HIPAA and high trust, or you're um, uh, in some way um, uh, uh, taking payment card uh, uh, payments and things of that nature. So it's PCI. So there, there's a, a multitude of frameworks out there. Um, in the government space, you have your, your uh, what is it, your um, uh, uh, 171, you have your... Mm -hmm. um, your uh uh 53, 53. ref four is it ref five five yeah, yeah ref five so uh uh your nist uh right csf things of that nature so there, there's a, a multitude of different frameworks out there so it's kind of i think that's gonna have some of the biggest growth within cyber uh over the next couple of years um just because it's there's not a lot of people who who know of it but every company needs it uh type situation and you don't necessarily have to have like uh, me and Chris have uh, uh, help desk. We have um, IT networking, engineering, things of that nature. So that's the, that. I think that what helps us is that helps us stand apart because we're within a sea of people who are doing GRC. We have very specific background and skills where we can uh, expand so to a certain extent because we we know ports and protocols. We know you know these intricacies and how networks work, mm -hmm. but you don't need to to know that to get into GRC, right? Like if you're a person who's really big into um, QA. Like if you're a person who's really big into uh, law or uh, legal ramifications, things of that nature, or if you're just a person who is good at technical writing, things of, things of that nature, like GRC is for you. So you should definitely look at it because um, it, it just, it's people who are really uh, focused on attention to detail and uh, uh, applying and adapting that and helping people because you have to have, there's a customer service aspect of it, right? Like if you're coming from engineering where you get to hide behind uh, the other side of the uh, the network operations center wall, <laughs> you have to interact with human <laughs> beings. Stage it there. might not be for you <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, because there is a lot of interfacing with people and talking to people right. to because they don't necessarily understand um, how the rules apply to their business. So they need help from that aspect. So there's that, that element. You have to have those soft skills to talk to people. And when you're in consulting and things of that nature, however, not everybody has to be that. Like you have some people who who are just nose and book need to know every reference, mm -hmm. everything. Um, and then those people are also consultants who don't necessarily have always interact with people. They still, there's still some interaction there, but you're not your, your V um, uh, CISO or things of that nature, right? You're more of the, um, uh, I would say uh, assessor, things of that nature, right? You're going through and you're, uh, you're making sure that they have all of the evidence and artifacts and things of that nature that they need to make sure that they pass whatever certification um, the company needs to, to continue to move on. But 
um, I'd say all this like, so like word, word vomit right now, but I'm just there's so many aspects of cyber that people don't know about. Um, this is but news like everybody thinks that you have to be a programmer, everybody thinks that you oh. have to be <laughs> you have to be an engineer, right? Like know. it's cool to have those talents as well, right? That makes you a Swiss Army knife. However, you don't need that to 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 come into cyber. Like those seven hundred thousand vacancies don't have to exist. Uh, but like you said, Chris, it's also the marketing, right? When these uh, these job requisitions go out, they're looking for somebody who has five years of uh, mm -hmm. cybersecurity experience and a CISP and yada, yada, right. yada. And that's not entry level. Entry <laughs> level with a CISP, yeah. SEC plus, C. Yeah, that's, that's, it's that's absurd, just, yeah, right? And that's not entry level, yeah. You're going to see that as an up and coming, you know, aspiring cybersecurity professional. And it's just like, it's demoralizing. Like, oh, these, these certs are hard. These certs are, they're, they're a lot yeah. of lot of work there's a lot of knowledge and a lot of experience that goes with this so i, I think that there definitely needs to be some level of open-mindedness and you know really the mentoring aspect of it right so i think cybersecurity leaders have to be better more, men, better mentors and really build um the communities out there that's that's going to be our cybersecurity workforce right and and we're seeing it, it those people are, are out there right so when i do the SSP, like you have your um Kenneth Ellington's, right? He started his, his own GRC Academy. Uh, you have your Aisha Hollins, right? She's a, a mentor of Visas, an author, uh, digital forensics pioneer, like the list goes on and on, PMP. Um, her uh, her co-host for her upcoming podcast, the, uh, Making IT Make Sense, Making It Make Sense, uh, uh, Miguel, he is a, a retired FBI agent, right? Like, so he was he was pioneering cyber before cyber had a name, right? So mm -hmm. he's 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 there during 9-11 uh doing doing uh, uh cyber uh forensic type things. So the field's been around for a long time. So you have these people in the field who are offering support and help and connections. Um who else? I mean, the list goes on and on. Like I said, we have Darren King Jr. on this week. We have uh uh Jay Sanders next week. He's also um he's Navy, so you'll you'll like that that um uh <laughs> interview, Chris. Um, like and he 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 stood up uh, like a enterprise around training and getting people uh, into cybersecurity. Um, so it's out there. So if you're seeking it, it's out there. However, don't fall into the pitfalls where somebody's trying to charge you ten grand to get you through a a certain mill or something like that because you're still not going to have the experience. Um, so it's it's a hard nut to crack. I get that. Oh, yeah. However, there are a lot of Especially if you're if you're a veteran, there's there's um, avenues for you to get in. If you are a minority uh, man or woman, there's avenues for you to get in. If you're a woman, there's avenues for you to get in. Uh, just you have to just have type type into Google what you what you are and what you're looking to to be, and there's plenty of free ways to start the course, right? Um, to to get into cyber, but also you have to stretch. You have to find ways to get the experience from what you currently do. So there's a lot of people who are doing things that are not IT or cyber related. And you have to look within your company, which they will they will definitely utilize you to do extra work. Don't get me wrong, but I, I think that that does that's a good on ramp. Like I'm not saying mm -hmm. that to kill yourself with work. I'm not I'm not trying to go down that mm -hmm. route. However, if you can embed yourself within the help desk, if you can. Uh, help out with policy and programs. You can find a mentor within the company mm -hmm. that is not not in your um, your your section, right? Like if um, you are uh, a, a flight attendant, like ask the help desk needs some help, or if there's something you can do uh, to kind of get yourself into the position where you can help them out to start to build that experience, and then you will you'll be able to check the box when it comes to HR because I think that's going to be the hardest. The ATS system is a beast and it does not care that you have potential, right? So that's mm -hmm. that's where things get kind of weird, uh, unfortunately. So I say all to say, reach out to us <laughs> or to anyone yeah. that's, that's in the field, right? Like LinkedIn is your friend and ask them, how did you get here? What did you do? Uh, and show them that you have interest and go from there. And uh, I've seen people who are jet engine mechanics and are on cybersecurity. Um, Right, like there, there's a lot of room and growth, and all you have to do is show interest and potential, and you too can be on the side of the fence. Uh, and we can fill those vacancies. So, no doubt, definitely potential. I mean, mentors and potential mentors out there, they can see potential, but most thing is they want to see enthusiasm, right? They want to see yeah. drive. And when they see that with you know aspiring professionals, they will do anything they can to help you out, right? 
Um, there it is. There's a lot of stuff out there. There's a lot of things out there for assistance cybersecurity. Thank you.